Hello everyone. So I have been wanting to redo my testimony video for quite some time now. Uh, when I made my testimony video, I think it was a year and a half, almost two years now, um, I, I never intended to put it on YouTube. It just turned out to be that way. At the time, I never even used my YouTube channel. So life is different since then. And I thought that I would retell the story. It's exactly the same story. It's just a bunch of things have transpired since I made that video that I kind of wanted to add to this one. Most of you know my story, some of you may not, but here it goes. My story is kind of twofold, so I'm gonna give the condensed version because we'd probably be here for a long time if I told the ins and outs of everything that transpired in my life to get me where I'm at today. But to start off with, um, how I grew up. I remember at a very young age just loving God. I didn't really know a lot about Jesus. I didn't know a lot about the gospel, but there was never a point where I didn't believe in God. I always had this sort of natural belief in him. My mother in particular was into a lot of new age and new thought beliefs, but they weren't recognized like that. We didn't have like a name for this. I didn't realize there was a name, new thought, new age, anything like that until way later. So these beliefs that I was surrounded with, in essence, were grounded in new thought, new age beliefs. My great grandparents were Christian scientists. This is not to be confused with Scientology. Lots of people make that mistake. Christian science is very different than Scientology. Christian science, though I never was a active Christian scientist, was very influential in my household as far as the metaphysical beliefs that they held. So I had that influence growing up and I always thought it was just a higher spiritual way of thinking. I, I thought that everybody had some sort of divine essence to, in some sort, but these weren't really beliefs that I grasped until much later. I, I just kind of assumed that God was in every religion. I also think, by the way, that this was the actual natural reaction to these beliefs. I don't think that anybody in my family realized that these were stemmed from basically new thought beliefs. And new thought is different than new age. I'll get into that a little bit later. It's the same, but it's different. There was just this underlying belief that there was just more spirituality out there to gain. We went to church. I remember going to a Presbyterian church for many years as a child. We went to church often. I remember we would get out our Bibles sometimes and read out of it. It wasn't that we were completely devoid of those kinds of things. It's just that I think that a lot of the things that we were taught were really cherry picked out of the Bible. So fast forward with that into my teenage years where it really gets interesting. I was not the happiest teenager. I always had a really loud moral compass, so to speak. I always wanted to do the right thing. I was always striving to try to be that good person. And any of my friends at this time would be agreeable with that. I was that person that always thought that we could be doing better. You know, you could be making better choices. I could be making better choices, but I had, I had a really big problem. <laughs> I think a lot of teenagers have this issue. I think a lot of people in general have this issue. I had a weird addiction to attention as odd as that sounds, but I loved it when people worried about me. I loved it when people thought about me. Are you okay, Melissa? Do you need anything? And I would make grandiose claims about things that would happen in my life to get that attention. That's how I fed it. And it turned me into a really big liar. My brain space at this time also wasn't the best. I was really depressed. I remember being just really lost. I had no aim in my life. I, had, I was really confused. I didn't really have a, a reason to be myself. I didn't know who I was. I, I was who I hung out with, which is really important. I tried to be what everybody else wanted me to be so I could fit in, 
so I could feel good about myself. Anything that gave me value in life was from some sort of external source, a boyfriend, a friend, my group of friends, whatever the case may be, I had to have that attention to feel good about myself. I had to have something, somebody giving me what I needed to feel valued. So from the age of around 13 to 16, I just, I fed that attention seeking with lying. And I would tell any lie I could think of to get me attention if it were a health problem, or maybe I would exaggerate a certain situation to get people to give me that boost that I needed. And remember all the while I'm very depressed and I'm very aimless and kind of in a dark place in life. As far as my spiritual life at this point in, in my life, I, I was a theist. I believed in God. I believed in Jesus, but I was not actively pursuing him by any stretch of the imagination. I never thought about Jesus. I never thought about God. It never entered my mind to go to church or do anything like that. It wasn't something that I looked at for answers for anything. I did still have a lot of attachment to beliefs that I had been brought up with that, that basically we can make our own reality, manifest, visualizing, things like that were, those words were very popular words in my household. You could manifest your reality. You could visualize things. There was this inner divinity that we were taught. And something kind of interesting as well. I, I had this fascination with the supernatural in general, whether it was paranormal, whether it was any sort of spiritual event, I was absolutely fascinated by it. And my mom in particular had had a lot of spiritual experiences growing up. She had things happen to her that I almost wished would happen to me. I saw her as more spiritual because these things were happening to her she would see things like auras. She would be able to see lights around people sometimes. She had a lot of experiences where she would have this visitor come to her. She would have beings have interactions with her. And beyond that, we would also have really creepy things happen to us when we were kids as well. And you'd think that that would scare me <laughs> as a kid, but it didn't. I wanted more. It, what it did is that it gave me a weird rush. It gave me some sort of knowing that there's something more out there that's tangible that I can actually experience and see and, and witness. And I wanted more of that because it showed me that there's something beyond what I can see. So I wouldn't think that there's anything bad with a psychic or crystals or anything like that, channeling spirits. It was a non-issue to me, but it wasn't something I was actively pursuing or thinking about in great detail at the time. All I was concerned about as a teenager was impressing my friends. <laughs> so my life is kind of spiritually devoid. I'm kind of depressed. I'm in this really confused mind space as a teenager. I have no aim. I, I don't have any sort of happiness or joy. and. I started dating somebody and this is where everything changes. I cared a lot about this person and I ended up, long story short, telling them a pretty big lie that I basically got caught in. As a result, they of course broke up with me and it catapulted me into a really deep depression. I became suicidal. I, I didn't want to live. Every day was absolute torture. It was pure darkness. It was nothing brought me joy. I didn't want to live anymore at all. There was no reason for me to live. I hated my life. I hated who I was. I didn't like who I was. Nobody liked me. I felt, you know, it was a self-hate that I had. I had a very low self-esteem, low, low self-confidence. I started thinking of ways I could end my life. And I'm really grateful there wasn't a gun in my house at this time because that would have been the quick, easy way to do it. So I started getting really creative and thinking, okay, what's the quickest, easiest way to do this? And there was a big bottle of prescription pills in our cabinet that I knew would do the trick. And I started kind of actively 
planning this, thinking what day, when I would do this. I also was so depressed that I didn't even want to eat. I didn't want to eat anything. I, I didn't eat. I lost a lot of weight during this time. There was a point where I even quit taking in fluids. I think because I just felt like I didn't deserve it. It was emotional and mental torture. Well, it was around this time that God got a hold of me. I remember it was the weekend and I was hanging out with one of my friends, mindlessly just hanging out. I, I literally was trying to waste time. We get a call from one of our mutual friends and asked us if we wanted to go to a house of a, another mutual friend of ours at a house party to, to go hang out at this house party with our friend. And at the time we said, no, all I wanted to do was go home and go to bed because that seemed to be the only relief I had was sleep because while I was sleeping, it just felt like the pain wasn't as intense. And I dropped off my friend and I'm heading home. And I even remember the exact road I was on, what time of night it was, where I was driving on this road. When I decided, you know what? No, I'm actually going to go to this party. And I remember that just there was nothing special about wanting to go to the party. It's not like I felt like this urgency to go. I just changed my mind and did a U-turn. It's kind of prophetic when you think about it. <laughs> I did. I turned my car around and went back to this party that I had been invited to. And I walk in and I'm, I'm going to give my friend an alias. I'm going to call him Mike. I, I walk into the house where this party is happening. And Mike, my friend who had invited me, was in the corner right as I walked in, just almost looking like he's in an argument with somebody. He's being very, very insistent about something. He's, he's being very animated about something he's saying. And I didn't pay any attention. I mean, I went and grabbed my bottle of wine or whatever it was and sat down on the couch, just kind of drowning in my sorrows. And, and as I sat down, Mike is still arguing a lot. He's being very loud about it to the point where our friends have to calm him down. <laughs> it turns out what had happened is Mike just got saved. He had just found Jesus. And he's at this party telling everybody about Jesus. <laughs> and nobody's listening to him. But he was, he was very evangelistic at the time. I remember everybody just kind of telling him to chill out. I, I was sitting on the couch and he's going on about whatever it is that he was going on about at that moment. I remember he was continuing to talk and there was something he said, of course, to a spiritual nature that I had disagreed with. And what he said next changed everything in my life. And it was so simple. All he did I remember him pointing at me and he said, no, there's nothing that you've done that God cannot forgive. He loves you. And I know you guys, I know it. I know. Isn't that so simple? <laughs> it's so simple. But that hit me hard. I did not grow up with the gospel in my house. There was an essence of not understanding forgiveness. Now, growing up in my household, I, I was taught certain things about God. I, I was taught some things that were true and some things that were not true. But I'd never heard that quite like that before. What my friend was telling me was that I could have forgiveness through Jesus. He's the one that I have been looking for. He's the one that fills my heart. He's the one and him alone is the only thing that can give me the love and the forgiveness that I need. That's basically what I heard that night. And I believed it. And it changed my life. And I'll never, I remember even when I was looking at, when, when I felt this peace. I don't really quite remember the drive home or if I had any other conversations after that. It was a while ago. I don't remember going to bed but I do remember waking up the next day. And this is my favorite part of the story. I always say it was like waking up in a Disney movie, like it didn't feel real. And the more I think about it, and the longer that I'm a Christian, the more fascinating 
this is to me. It was, it was like my miracle. I was lost, depressed, suicidal, anxious, completely depressed, just completely low self-esteem, everything in a dark place in my head. And I woke up, but when I woke up, I felt this peace, absolute, complete peace. There was this weight lifted off of me and I didn't know anything about what the Bible said. I didn't know what it said about being a a new creation, being born again, nothing. But I remember sitting up in my bed. I remember even how I was sitting. I'm like, wow, the sun shining through the window and I hear birds chirping and I felt this, this joy and this peace. It was incredible. There were two things that really struck me. First, I don't know who that person was yesterday. I woke up with this sense of a new identity. And remember, I hadn't read the Bible. I didn't know anything about being born again or the new creation, nothing. I felt like I was this new person. And the second thing was my insatiable hunger to know more about what my friend said last night. I wanted to read the Bible. I wanted to watch. I remember trying to find preachers on TV. I, I, all I wanted to do was know more. It was this hunger. Anything I could have gotten my hands on to teach me more about Jesus at this time, I was all over it. I remember calling my friend after this, telling him, you absolutely changed my life. Everything that you said that night, I believed and I... I am just completely in love with Jesus right now. And I was, I told everybody, I, if anybody who would listen to me, I told them about Jesus, about what had happened to me. If I could have shouted it from the rooftops, I would have. I started going to church and I, I got to be honest, during that, that summer of my life, I, I remember I had just turned 17 and then that summer, it was the best summer ever of my life. I was just on my honeymoon with God. I was just wanting to know more and and wanting to read more, but another problem arose. (laughs) The thing is about me is that people that know me and people that are familiar with who I am as a person, I'm a very, I can be very inquisitive and it's not always the easiest thing to deal with that with me if I'm honest. I had just had this amazing experience with Jesus, with God. And I was never the same ever after that. Completely different, 180. But I had a lot of questions about the Bible. And there were things I didn't understand. I didn't understand how we got the Bible. What's up with that? Because I always was taught that there's extra books that were outside the Bible, that there's much more that God revealed to mankind that's not in the Bible. We can't trust the Bible. And then if I were to read the Bible, I had questions about that. What about Jesus being God? Who is he praying to in the garden? What about people that have never heard the gospel? The basic questions that any new believer would ask, I asked them. The issue was, is that I was going to an independent Baptist church at the time, which I loved, but they were very strict. And I remember asking these questions and it was met with, a sort of opposition that I kind of shouldn't be asking these questions. And I didn't like that. I started visiting other churches that I liked, but I still didn't have somebody that was patient enough to sit down with me and discuss these things with me. And I, I'm going to preface this with saying I'm not that old, but it's not like I could have gone to the internet at that time to research this stuff. If all these well-known apologists that are a click away on our smartphones or the internet were around and were more accessible to me, I probably would have, and I, and I knew about it. I I probably would have read their stuff. I didn't even know what apologetics was. And if you don't know what it is, it's basically the defense of the Christian faith. You're answering these tough questions. You're defending 
the, the view of Christianity by answering these tough questions. I didn't realize it, but I kind of was an apologist at the get-go. I had a very evidential approach to Christianity and I needed more evidence. I wanted to know more. It, it was more than just wanting the evidence. It was really wanting to know God, wanting to know the answers to these questions. And I didn't want to have an accidental faith. I wanted to have an evidential faith. I wanted to believe and be able to say why I believed it. And again, all the while, did not know that this was actually in the Bible. This is taught in scripture that we should have a case for what we believe. And we can use our mind to research these things. So kind of going on a rabbit trail with that, because it's very important to understand that it was the lack of this evidence of these, of these hard discussions that led me to embrace the new age, new thought teachings that I had grown up with. It was what I had. There was lots of metaphysical books on the, on the shelf that answered those questions. You want to know about pain and suffering? Well, here, let's talk about subjective reality. Let's talk about ego. Let's talk about all these other things that supposedly Jesus talked about. So all the while, I'm thinking that this is real Christianity. I'm thinking this is true spirituality, that all these Bible-thumping Christians over here that are so judgmental and intolerant, they got it wrong. They're, they're the lower spiritual Christians. So in order to counteract these questions that I had, that a lot of Christians actually still do have, I embraced new age and new thought teachings. Now I want to kind of differentiate between new age and new thought for a second here. New age and new thought, they're basically the same on many aspects, on many avenues. I call new thought, however, the evil half-sister of new age. <laughs> they're related, but they can teach different things. For example, I never was into crystals that much. I remember thinking and believing that yes, they have powers that everything has a vibration and that everything has some sort of frequency that can give out some sort of energy that can affect your reality or your body or your thoughts or feelings somehow. But I never actively pursued having crystals or using them for healing or anything like that. I was never into tarot cards. I never, I, I remember seeing a psychic once astrology. I was never really into that. Aliens was another thing in the new age that was really big that I was interested in. I was fascinated in, but I didn't actually pursue that type of spirituality. I didn't really look into it. What I was more interested in were metaphysical teachings. Because I considered myself a Christian, the Bible had a metaphysical definition to it on a lot of things. So I followed the teachings of people like Esther Hicks, Eckhart Tolle, even Oprah to an extent. I, I agreed with her spirituality and I found that me and her were very much in tune with the same things that we believed. Wayne Dyer was another one. Basically, my pursuit was to find my own inner divinity and to become as spiritual as I could. And for a while, that's just what seemed to work for me. And I thought it was biblical. I thought the whole thing was, this is what Jesus was really trying to teach is what I was thinking. That if we could only see and open up our spiritual eyes, we would be able to see that this is what Jesus really taught. There was always a pursuit for higher spiritual knowledge. So I remember meditating. I remember wanting to attract my own spirit guide. Not recommended. I had some pretty crazy things happen to me. Um, I do think even after all this time going through all of that, the things that I dabbled in should have been more, should have led to more of a result than they did. I almost think that maybe there was some sort of blockage on that stuff, which I am now grateful for, of course. So this is probably why I am now very passionate about people who call themselves Christians, but A, don't know what the Bible says, and B, they're basically following this new thought, new age type of Christianity and don't even know it because I didn't know it. I never read my Bible. I, I didn't know really what was in there. I had few cherry picked scriptures that 
I liked and seemed to fit with my lifestyle. It was a salad bar belief system, many paths to God. Every religion had truth in it and every religion somehow, some way could get to Jesus. And if you were a good person, then you could go to heaven. Basically, the only deal breaker I remember having was that if you were an atheist or something that you just, or a terrible, horrible person. And, but other than that, the idea of hell didn't make sense to me. I, I just had a complete misunderstanding of God's nature. I did not know what the Bible actually said about who God was. It made sense in my head on who I thought God was, but it, I, I struggled with a God that didn't look the way I wanted him to look. Had I had just studied and read my Bible, a lot of these questions would have been answered, even if I didn't understand all of it. So this is one reason why I'm really big about people studying their Bibles, even if they don't understand a whole lot of it. Moving on, that's where I was after I became a Christian. A big reason why I was there, again, was because I didn't get my tough questions answered. Nobody answered them. Nobody took the time to do that. And as a result, it catapulted me into these false beliefs that I had resorted to, the new age, new thought beliefs. I blended them together. I married it together with my Christianity. And that was my belief system at the time. This all changed after I had my first child. Those of you who have kids know that your life can change pretty dramatically after having children. And mine did. And I had this thought one day that what if my child comes home and asks me these questions that I don't have an answer to, even in the, in the new thought, even, even in my beliefs at the time, I didn't have an answer for a lot of these things. And I was, I was into it more than ever at this point. After I had my daughter, I, I was actively daily pursuing affirmations the law of attraction was huge with me. I lived and breathed the law of attraction. And I got to be honest, guys, I didn't, I didn't have an issue with life at the time. It's not like I was in some sort of eternal, internal struggle. Um, <laughs> I, I, I didn't want for anything. I was pretty happy. But I did want answers to my questions about where did the Bible come from? Can you explain this part in the Bible to me? And, you know, these questions that I had. Well, all this changed. God really does have a sense of humor. He used a dude at a party to get me to him. And he used two nice Jehovah's Witnesses to get me out of the new age. A few of you have heard me explain this story. So my apologies if it sounds redundant, but that's what God used to knock me down and get me out of my false belief system. (laughs) I'm in this mindset at this time and I'm searching out answers to these questions and on some levels. And lo and behold, one day, two nice Jehovah's Witnesses knock on my door. And remember at the time, I thought all religions, especially if you called yourself a Christian, that they all believed in the same thing, just basically maybe in different little ways. It, It was never anything major though. And I remember being very excited when I answered the door because I actually thought that I had used the law of attraction to bring them to me. I believed that. I thought that. And so I was excited because I thought, oh, these are the people that are going to teach me about Jesus. They're going to teach me about the Bible. And what I was looking for was a very intelligent, knowledgeable, back and forth conversation that would help me to have an answer for all these questions that I had. I thought that we'd have this, you know, really good stimulating conversation about the Bible and Jesus. And that's just not what happened. I remember being very surprised at how little they went off of what they were supposed to say. They, they had this little script of things that they said and, and I had off the script questions. So I was surprised that we couldn't have, you know, that kind of conversation. But what really confused me was around the fourth visit, third or fourth visit. Because I remember thinking that a lot of what Jehovah's Witnesses believed was a rumor. I I didn't believe that. I thought people had it wrong. In other words, that no, they don't believe that Jesus is Michael, the archangel. They don't actually believe 144,000 people go to heaven, all this stuff. But they did. And it was when one of the 
women mentioned that they wanted to talk about Jesus being Michael, the archangel on our next visit, I knew something was wrong. I felt the Holy spirit. Like I hadn't felt him in many years, just warn me. And I remember having this complete urgency to go research. And I, and I did, I, I remember going to the internet and just researching hours and hours of research on this religion. And it, it wasn't just the Jehovah's Witness religion either. It was uh, Mormonism. It was LDS. It, it was the first time that this world had been open to me that answered these questions that even I had. And it was rather confusing, but at the same time, it was like a snowball effect. I couldn't quit learning. In the process of this learning, I came upon some articles and videos and blogs about some of my beloved teachers that I had learned from, that I had learned spirituality from. And I remember thinking at the time, how could they say anything wrong about these people? They're loving and caring and all they talk about is love. All they talk about is acceptance. How can you say that's not biblical? Because that's what I believed. I believed that it, it was all love, all harmony. It was all about peace. And as long as you were doing that, how could that be wrong? How could you sit there and, and tell them and judge them and say that what they were saying was not what Jesus taught? I completely did not agree with that at all. I thought that that was an ego type of belief that they were thinking in a lower spiritual way. But then I crept onto one blog one article, I still don't know what website this was, and I still don't even know who said it, but it was, it was one sentence. Simple things work with me, apparently, but it was one sentence that I read. It was talking about a well-known spiritual teacher. I don't re remember exactly who it is. What this person said was, ye will be like God. Sounds like a slimy serpent to me. I'll never forget just the blood rushing out of my head <laughs> when I read that. I'm like, oh my word, it is the serpent's lie because that's what I believed. I believed that we were all godlike. I believed that we all could be like God, that we are in essence little gods. I never connected that being associated with deception, never once. It never occurred to me <laughs> that that literally is the oldest lie in the book, quite literally, that you can be like God. and. I um, was shocked, very shocked after that. But I remember I kept reading, I kept researching, and I discovered something, that there's a name for what I was believing, and it was called New Age. It was called New Thought. Up until that point, you guys, I did not realize that there was a name, a category for what I believed. I thought it was just secret. I thought it was more spirituality. I thought it was just a higher spiritual realm. So to have this label on it actually kind of helped me because then all of a sudden I could categorize what my beliefs were and how it was distinct from what the Bible taught. So all of this is going on in about the time frame of about two weeks after my Jehovah's Witnesses were visiting. And during those two weeks, two or three weeks, I believe, I had discovered my beliefs were wrong. The Jehovah's Witnesses are considered a cult of Christianity. It was during this time that I really felt this strong calling from God to get into counter cult ministry to Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons. And I ran with it. I loved researching these religions. And more than that, I really loved teaching other people about these religions. And I loved learning about it. I loved witnessing to them. And for years after that, I pursued this. This was my ministry. I learned a lot about the Bible. It was through these ministries and through learning from them and their experiences that I learned a lot about the questions that I had about the Bible. I had to know what I believed to defend it. It was through this that I really started growing my love for apologetics. This was around the year 2011 that I got into ministry. And in 2000, around 2014 was when I kind of put it on hold because I had my second child. And of course, that takes a lot of energy, a lot of time, you know, having two young children. In December of 2014, I discovered that I have an artistic talent. If some of you follow me on social media, like Instagram or my Facebook, I post every once in a while the art pieces that I have worked on. I was not always an artist. 
there's a whole story behind this, but basically I went to the school of YouTube. <laughs> I got really good at painting really fast and before long started to uh, pursue it. It turned into more than a hobby for me and it, it's part of who I am. It's a huge blessing that I get to sit down and paint sometimes. It's, I love what I do. So that was kind of a placeholder for me for about a year until I came back into ministry in around 2015. At this time, I really started wanting to open up more about my new age past, you see, because I wasn't proud <laughs> of the fact that I was supposed to be a Christian and I had believed in these very deceptive beliefs. I, I was not proud of that. In fact, after I had discovered what I believed was false, it took me about six months to even talk to another Christian about it because I was embarrassed. And one of the ways that I was embarrassed was I felt like I should have known. I had been going to church, actively going to church without knowing that what I was believing was false. I get it. I get that I had some responsibility in that. I should have read my Bible. I should have been more diligent. But I think in all the years that I was going to church, nothing tipped me off that I was basically a new age Christian. That concerned me. Really, a lot of the issue is that people don't have legitimate answers to Christianity, so they turn to things like this. They turn to outer spirituality, thinking that that's really where the answers are. And I, I can go on about this, but I think more churches need apologetics. We need to, especially our young people, we need to talk to them and help them learn how to defend what they believe. But it's, it's good theology and apologetics. I have all this head knowledge. I, I, over all these years, I'm, I'm reading, I'm researching, I'm ready to go. And I was really, a lot of it was self-taught. I wanted to help people. I wanted to help them with their difficult questions. I wanted them to challenge me because I still had so much to learn. That hunger never went away and it's still here. I want to learn more. I want to get to know Jesus more. I want to, you know, be his hands and feet and serve him. I've basically been pursuing ministry to ex New Agers, New Agers in general since around 2015. And I've been in counter cult ministry since 2011. Another thing that's happened since then is I am now in seminary and it's really amazing. It's a lot of work, but I am learning a lot. And also something kind of cool that's happened since I made my last video that has transpired is the person that I had lied to in the beginning of my story that had put up big boundaries with me at that time. Over the years, we actually became friends. And their beliefs were somewhat intertwined with lots of new age and new thought beliefs, believe it or not. Lots of Buddhism, uh, Eastern mysticism, things like that. Somebody I never thought would become a Christian reported to me recently that they now believe in Jesus as their savior. They are now a believer. That really touched me and it really made me be in awe of God and his sovereignty and the way that he works in our lives. I, I just never thought that that would have happened. It's just, it, to this day, it's just really fascinating to me to think of how God worked in my life to bring me to where I'm at now. I, I want to encourage people right now that if there is somebody that you love that's in the new age or even in you know a, a false deceptive belief system, don't give up praying on them. Educate yourself on what they believe. I love putting out content for you guys, for you to be better equipped and how to defend what you believe, to, to know what the Bible teaches. And I always give my favorite resources in every video I do. This one's more personal because it is my own personal story. And I know that people will be seeing this for the first time uh, compared to my last video that I made. So basically that's my story. Uh, if you've been hanging with me since the very beginning, then you know most of this. For those of you that don't, now you know. I know that a lot of you have been following me for quite a while, and I just want to thank you guys for your encouragement and your support. And uh, that's my story for the most part. And I, I love sharing it. I love sharing my experience, my own personal experience. Every time I tell it, it's like I learned something new. I learned something new about God's grace, about his sovereignty, but mostly his grace. He had a lot of grace for me during those years. 
But I always think if I never went through that, I wouldn't have the testimony I have. I wouldn't know that this is an epidemic in our churches now. And I'm speaking up about it. We need to know about this. Maybe I can be that voice for somebody that I wish I had, that somebody should have said something to me. Some Christian in my life should have pulled me aside and said something lovingly to me. And maybe that would have started me out researching the new age and the new thought. But nobody knows what it is. Most Christians don't realize that a lot of things that they believe are new age and new thought. Kind of want to end on that note of that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. And it makes some people really mad. And I don't care. <laughs> All I care about is what Jesus thinks about me. I'm going to go before him on judgment day. And I want to hear, well done. I'm not here to please people. I'm here to please him. And I just want to thank you guys for watching anything that I do and, and supporting anything that I do. Also, I have done another testimony video with uh, Dr. Michael Heiser. Me and Doreen went out a few years ago to visit with him. It was a fantastic experience. And again, every time I tell it, it's just a little bit more information or told a different way, a little bit more detail. If you want to check that out as well, I will also leave a link to that video in the description of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you all.